This is a uh, this is called One Laptop Per Child, which is a product of the MIT Media Lab and its founder, Nicholas Negroponte. It was unveiled at uh, WISIS in Tunisia in 2005 with Nicholas Negroponte and Kofi Annan, uh, uh, stating very clearly that this is a machine, it's an education machine, intended for children in the economically developing world. And because it's intended for children in very poor and remote places on Earth, there are three distinguishing characteristics that separate this laptop from any other laptop in the world. The first, and seemingly the most obvious and easiest, although it's neither, is that it becomes an e-book that can be read in direct sunlight. If you go outside right now with your laptop and you shine it and put it in the sun, you won't be able to read it, or your cell phone or any other screen for that matter. We know that our intended uh, demographic, our beneficiaries, need to be able to read in direct sunlight. The second is that you don't need electricity to run this laptop. You can be powered by the sun. And not only can it be powered by the sun, but in development is a device that would allow children to pull, uh, we call it a yo-yo, which will be ready in January of next year. For one minute of pulling will be about 10 minutes of energy. So for about six minutes of pulling, you get about an hour of power. And the third is that even without a server or internet connection, Children will be able to communicate directly with one another instantaneously via this mesh network that was developed at the MIT Media Lab. So if I were a kilometer from this table and Walter were to communicate with me by message or we could share an application, we could be reading the same book at the exact same time, we could do so without a server. And if somebody else were another kilometer away and somebody else were another kilometer away, we could all communicate instantaneously to about five or six kilometers away in a very large square radius. And if you had a repeater, villages could be connected to each other, schools could be connected to each other. And the second point about the mesh that is, is, is very uh, relevant is that even if one person had access to the internet in that very large square kilometer radius, then everybody has access to the internet, which makes internet access not only efficient and effective, but also possible and affordable. So, this machine, even though the technology is probably the most advanced in the world, is not a technology project. It's an education project. And it's based on a theory of education called constructionism, which was first propounded by Jean Piaget in the 1950s and picked up by Seymour Papert, an MIT professor in the 1960s. And that philosophy of education says basically that children learn more by doing, by engaging in their own learning, by creating with technology to become, in the final analysis, critical thinkers. So if you think about what we all learned in school, we sat at a desk and teachers told us what to learn, and we learned about, for example, we learned about gravity. We learned maybe that an apple falls from a tree as an example of gravity. In this case, we asked children to actually not only learn about gravity and its basic concepts, but to program an example of gravity occurring, to draw an apple falling from a tree using basic code, which is the building block of programming, 